Hi, I'm Brent. Today we've got a video update on the fuel system upgrades with your Subaru and in particular we're talking about the Subaru SDI model year of around MY08 to MY15 because all of those models had very, very similar engine specifications, although the MY15 um, engine in its state of what it was delivered factory standard by Subaru was actually pushed probably a little bit hard for its outright performance to deliver the final results before that model changes. What we're going to discuss today is to help you understand when you're pushing power outputs of around 350, 400 kilowatts at the wheels, what are the typical upgrades that you need to be aware of with regard to fuel line, fuel pumps, uh, surge tanks, and most importantly, um, injector design. And this particular engine amongst the two of them that we've done, which are on the dyno today, is a MY12 SDI. It's got a fully built engine. You will see in some of our previous videos, these engines, um, we've shown you what is inside them, what you need to do to upgrade them. We're talking about anywhere between a twenty dollars to a $30,000 engine with all the fruit, but with reliable outputs and consistent performance. Now, what has happened uh, with the final running process of these cars is the uh, E85 upgrade that the customers have opted for has now taken the fuel delivery system in the car outside its scope, even with uh, knowing that running on 98 octane fuel, these cars are more than capable of handling the amount of power that we've been chasing, what we've already delivered, but the clients have now opted to take advantage of the flex fuel kit where they can run anywhere, combination of a full tank of E85 or a full tank of 98 octane fuel and mix it in between and the Zetronix flick fuel sensor which is calibrated and uh, wired into the factory ECU and then custom tuned using the advanced features of the Ecotec tuning software of the factory ECU allows them to get even more uh, power because the E85 fuel has got a higher oxygen content. Now um, the downside is they run when you're running on E85, you're talking about a 30% increase in fuel, so therefore you need to go to bigger injectors, and therefore it puts the uh, fuel delivery system right to the limit of the capability. And we found on the dyno that as we're approaching around um, E60 to E75% um, in the tank, we're running out of fuel, and we had to then go back to a 98 ROM fuel tune for the clients to drive the car before we could then upgrade the fuel system and then allow them to go to a full tank of 100% E85. Well, we've now done that, and what I want to do is explain to you what we've done, the complexities of making sure that you do it properly, because one of the important things is, is that you don't want to just go to big everything, because you've got to remember, it's a combination between running 98 octane fuel and E85, and the 30% variation in fuel um, flow between can make the difference between a car that will idle nicely or not have the right amount of fuel to deliver when it's needed. So what we've opted for, and you can see in the engine bay, it looks all very original, but these parts here are the original fuel components as supplied by Subaru, but we've used a lot of quick connection couplings, but right down inside here is a TurboSmart rising rate fuel pressure regulator, which replaces the factory fuel pressure regulator. And what you can't see, but I'll show you in a still photo, buried right down the bottom there is a Process West um, high volume fuel pump and surge tank. So what happens is the factory fuel pump in the tank fills that surge assembly um, for when the engine is on load and that higher volume pump will then deliver the fuel to the fuel system when it needs it so you're not going to run out of fuel from a fuel pressure and a fuel flow point of view because you want to have plenty of flow and the right amount of pressure and the pressure which is important is you've got to remember these model cars from Subaru have a variable fuel pump control mechanism and it's important that when you do mechanical modifications to the fuel system that you don't overload the in-tank pump with a higher um, current draw, which can then ultimately cause wiring problems and um, burnout connectors and also, also electronically damage some of the variable speed controllers on the fuel pump assembly, which therefore makes it sometimes a little bit easier to put a remote surge pot in the car where the, by you use the factory system to supply the fuel constantly filling up that tank so you have a large capacity of fuel to draw upon when your engine is under load and then out of that fuel supply you have a higher output pump to supply the engine which is constantly running at high volume and high pressure all the time and it's then remotely wired in to a separate power supply which is then triggered off the injector system so if in the case of the accident it will turn the pump off and not continue to supply 
fuel to an engine that may be on fire or may have had a major accident from a safety point of view. And that then provides you the advantages of not having to worry about um, burning out the wiring on the original factory fuel um, system at the back of the car, but you've got the capacity at the front to take advantage of. Now, we then talk about the importance of making sure that you've got the right uh, fuel pressure from a rising rate point of view to manage the fuel pressure as the car comes on the boost because obviously as the car comes on the boost you need more pressure to get into the inlet manifold as the boost goes up. The Turbo Smart Fuel Pressure Regulator is recommended by the guys at Process West so they both work very good together. But the really important part is these fuel lines down here when you install all these components it's actually quite complicated with the later models with the different ways that Subaru has um, fitted these hoses and the way it needs to be connected up. If you don't get it right, you end up with way too much fuel pressure, um, like we're talking 50, 60 PSI, um, and you find the stumbling point is you can't get the fuel pressure down to what it should be. Now, you can actually get a car to run at 50 to 60 PSI static fuel pressure, but it's not good because then when you start putting boost into it and the fuel pressure goes up even higher, there's a dramatic risk of um, putting injectors and other fuel lines under a ridiculous amount of fuel pressure which is just not necessary. The challenge is to get it back down to a level that the original factory system was designed for and then making sure you've got plenty of flow and plenty of pressure when the engine is under load and when you need to make sure it delivers you the, um, the right amount of fuel that you need to ensure that you're going to generate the grunt that you want to achieve out of the car. The last thing which is really important is when you're running this type of power out, but you need to run around a 1500cc style injector, you do not want to go any bigger than that um, unless it's absolutely necessary because when you run on uh, a 98 octane fuel, you're expecting to run 30% less fuel through an injector that is already very, very big and you'll end up with a car that just won't idle properly. So it's a balance between not too big and not too small. The other important part is to make sure that that injector is designed um, and will give the right type of spray pattern and it will fit in the inlet manifold correctly and will also inject the spray down into the port correctly and also give you the right type of pattern otherwise again you'll have um, funny engine idle problems or in some situations you'll have um, lean fuel mixtures at different RPMs of the engine range because that fuel injector is not spraying correctly when you need it and depending on what type of brand um, you can get from around the world those injectors have a huge impact on the final tune and the drivability and most importantly the reliability and the performance that you can get out of these cars when it's all done right. So ultimately at the end of the day choose your fuel delivery system. Bigger is not always better. Make sure that you've got the right amount of fuel and the right amount of fuel pressure with plenty of flow. You've got the fuel lines. Remembering you're dealing with fuel you want to make sure that all your fittings and your connectors are nice and reliable. There's absolutely no chance of any leakage from a safety point of view. And then most importantly, make sure you've got plenty of reserve fuel when you need it, as in the Process West um, uh, system to give you that upgraded amount of fuel when you want to drive the car hard and you can then rely on the static system in the tank. One last thing you've got to remember also is the return line back to the fuel tank can also sometimes indirectly cause you a incorrect fuel pressure system by causing a back pressure back into the tank Sometimes you need to do a modification to the return line where it goes back into the collector assembly in the actual fuel tank assembly itself, which is the plastic holder that supports the original factory fuel pump. Because sometimes if you're running a lot of horsepower back with that system and when it's in bypass mode and you've got a lot of fuel going back to the tank, it can be restricted, which then can effectively bank up in the system and indirectly cause you to run too high a fuel pressure. And you think it's at the front of the engine when actually it's a restriction on the return line back in the fuel tank that can be the root cause of your problem. So there you have it. Um, we look forward to uh, giving some dyno graphs and a few more static pictures of these cars on the dyno today. But for more information on your Subaru, no matter where you are in the world, I hope this has helped you. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. And um, no matter where you are, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.